There's one more chip. And it must be destroyed also. Welcome to Watch Mojo. And today we're counting down our picks for the top 20 saddest movie deaths. Oh, unpleasant to behold, isn't it? The tale is thrilling, if I say so myself. But now is not the time to tell us. For this list, we're looking at the most emotionally devastating ends in movie history. We'll only be focusing on live action characters that can speak on this list. Both animals and animated people deserve their own lists to cry to. Beware of tons of spoilers ahead. Which of these deaths made you weep the most? Let us know in the comments below. Number 20, Yondu, Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2. Yondu's death scene contains two things that are guaranteed to make audiences cry, a heroic sacrifice and a touching father-son relationship. He may have been your father, boy, but he wasn't your daddy. After serving as a bit of an anti-hero, Yondu undergoes some great character development and fully turns to the good side. He also embraces Peter as his son. I'm sorry I didn't do none of it right. I'm damn lucky you, my boy. This comes to a head when only one of them can leave a planet alive. Once it's clear Yondu is giving up his life to save his surrogate son, nothing can stop the waterworks from flowing. His death is brutally sad, but it also leads to a very touching funeral scene backed by the brilliant music of Cat Stevens. I know I have to go. It is the beautiful send-off that Yondu deserves. Really well, old friend. Number 19, Satine, Moulin Rouge. Coming from the imaginative mind of Baz Luhrmann, Moulin Rouge is regarded as one of the greatest musicals of the 2000s. But I know about art and love. If only because I long for it with every fiber of my being. She loves you. Not only is it visually extravagant, but it's emotionally rewarding as well. Satine is the headliner of Moulin Rouge that eventually succumbs to tuberculosis and dies in Christian's arms. I'll always be with you. <sighs> What's worse is that her death comes right after the duo proclaims their love for each other. Unfortunately, all Christian can do is sob as she passes in front of him. Ewan McGregor's performance and pained cries really add to the power of the scene. Their relationship was just as beautiful as the club itself, but like the original Moulin Rouge, it had to come to an end. <sighs> Number 18, The Terminator. Terminator 2, Judgment Day. T2 did something amazing. Not only did it make us care about a robot, it also made us care about a machine who was originally designed to slaughter innocent people. You killed 17 police officers that night. Men with families. Children. After getting reprogrammed in the future, a T-800 goes back in time and saves John from the far more advanced T-1000. But the good robot can't risk any scientists copying his technology and kickstarting a machine apocalypse. So he sacrifices himself by letting himself be lowered into a vat of molten steel. Yeah. I cannot self-terminate. It's a harrowing death scene made all the more difficult by the father-son relationship that the Terminator shares with John. Plus, his final thumbs up is one of the most iconic images in movie history. How can you not cry at it? It would always be there, and it would die to protect him. Number 17, Ricky Baker, Boys in the Hood. This John Singleton movie served as a realistic glimpse into South Central Los Angeles in the early 90s. At the heart of the story is gang member Doughboy and his ambitious half-brother Ricky. Plus I like computers. Maybe I could do that? What do you think? Young brother, I think you can do anything you put your mind to. While Doughboy is content with day drinking and chilling in the hood, Ricky wants to go to college. I just want you to know we're interested in you coming to the campus. Get a good look around, you know, a feel for the school as a whole. But these hopes are dashed when he is gunned down in a drive-by. Many things conspire to make this death particularly tragic. Not only is Ricky the most innocent character, but he had high hopes of getting out, passed the SAT, and has a toddler at home. The wailing from his mother and girlfriend after his demise is just too much to handle. <coughs> Number 16, Gwen Stacy, The Amazing Spider-Man 2. 
Although many fans knew it was coming, this death was still extremely heartbreaking. Gwen and Peter were an adorable couple that felt incredibly realistic on screen. Okay, guys, get together, Hi. get together right now. A quick win. All right, cheese. Cheese. Okay. However, audiences knew that she famously died in a well-known Spider-Man story arc from 1973, and Mark Webb recreated this sad story to perfection. Unfortunately, it is every bit as tormenting on screen as it is in the pages of a comic book. I know it feels like we're saying goodbye, but we will carry a piece of each other into everything that we do next. When Gwen falls from a high place during a battle with Green Goblin, he tries to catch her, but his web reaches her too late. Peter's realization that he failed to save Gwen breaks our hearts into a million pieces. Thanks to a terrific performance from Andrew Garfield, this death scene always gets us choked up. No, please, please. Number 15, Neil Perry, Dead Poet Society. Neil is a very smart teenager attending the all-male prep school Welton Academy. His life has changed forever when a new English teacher named John Keating introduces him to the magic of poetry. We don't read and write poetry because it's cute. We read and write poetry because we are members of the human race, and the human race is filled with passion. Unfortunately, Neil's overbearing father does not share his newfound love of the arts, and he places Neil in military school. This turn is too much for the young man. Folks, oh. that sound. Neil tragically takes his own life. As the audience is confronted with this difficult subject matter, the grieved reactions from the other characters are excruciating to watch. It's a very disturbing sequence that serves as a major tonal shift in the otherwise uplifting movie. No. Oh, my oh, son! He's my right. son, my poor he's son! All right. He's all right! He's all right! He's all right! Stop it! Number 14, Goose, Top Gun. There are few movies as unabashedly macho as Top Gun. Yet no matter how enjoyable the flight sequences and shirtless torsos are, the film still finds time for some deep emotion. Goose is Maverick's friend, wingman, and radar intercept officer. Hey, Goose, you big stud! That's me, honey! Take me to bed or lose me forever! Show me the way home, buddy! He's arguably the purest character in the movie. Naturally, this means he had to die. Sir, let go of him! You gotta let him go, sir! During the film, Maverick and Goose suffer a flameout and go into a flat spin. This forces them to eject from the plane. Unfortunately, Goose is ejected straight into the canopy and dies on impact. It's an awful thing to witness, and it launches Maverick, and viewers for that matter, into a downward spiral of grief. You gotta let him go. You gotta let him go. Number 13, Maggie Fitzgerald, Million Dollar Baby. This boxing drama from Clint Eastwood starts off with a hopeful tone. However, it takes a major left turn and ends in truly miserable fashion. I found you a fighter, and you made her the best fighter she could be. I killed her. Maggie is a waitress who gets into professional boxing and is trained by cranky gym owner Frankie Dunn. She eventually works her way up to a Las Vegas bout. But after reaching this summit, her career comes to a premature end. Can I be frozen like this the rest of my life? What are you going to stand the tail? I don't know how he's going to take it. Maggie is illegally sucker punched and lands awkwardly on a stool. This hit causes her to break her neck and lose her ability to move her limbs. In the end, Maggie asks Frankie to end her life with a fatal dose of adrenaline. It is an unforgettable ending that packs an enormous emotional wallop. And I'll give you a shot and you'll stay asleep. Number 12, Thomas J. Sennett, My Girl. There are very few things in life more tragic than the death of a child. It hurts, it hurts so bad, we can stop. While searching for Veda's mood ring, Thomas kicks a bee's nest, and its occupants proceed to sting him numerous times, resulting in a fatal allergic reaction. It's not so much the death scene itself that stirs the emotions, as we don't really see anything except Thomas flailing around and his glasses falling to the ground. Wait. Wait. 
It's Veda's reaction that really tugs at the heartstrings, and Anna Klumsky sells her pain with acting skills far beyond her age. That scene in the funeral home has been indelibly ingrained in our brains since childhood, and we can't help but get emotional every time we think about it. Put his glasses on! Put on his glasses! <laughs> Be an Number 11. Bruno and Shmuel, The Boy in the Striped Pajamas Movies don't get much darker than this. It tells the story of Bruno and Shmuel, two young boys who are caught in the midst of the Holocaust. Bruno is a young German who's indoctrinated with anti-Semitic propaganda, yet he befriends the imprisoned Shmuel. Are you not allowed out? Why? What have you done? I'm a Jew. One day, Bruno decides to help Shmuel find his missing father, but the two are ferried into a gas chamber. It's all right. I think we're just waiting in here until the rain stops. Clouds off! The Holocaust is undoubtedly one of the most tragic events in human history, and by telling the story through the perspective of two children, it allows viewers a more personal glimpse into its utter depravity. This movie perfectly highlights the duality of humanity, its empathy and senseless wickedness, which makes for some truly unforgettable viewing. We're not supposed to be friends, you and me. We're meant to be enemies. Number 10. Tony Stark, Iron Man, Avengers Endgame The mind-blowing conclusion to the Avengers saga saw many distressing deaths, including that of Black Widow. Let me go. No. No. One of the biggest blows came when Iron Man met his end. Thanos was ready to erase the lives of everyone in the universe. Unable to lose his wife and daughter, Iron Man steps forward and gives his life to save everyone he loved. And I am Iron Man. The Marvel Cinematic Universe began with Robert Downey Jr.'s endlessly charismatic Tony Stark. So it's fitting that Phase 3 started to come to a close with his sacrificial demise. The death is certainly sad from a pure storytelling perspective, but it's also sorrowful for what it represents, the symbolic end of the MCU as we know it. Number 9. Albus Dumbledore, Harry Potter and the Half-Blood Prince As Harry Potter's school years drew to a close, significant characters kept dying left and right. Perhaps the most shocking of all was the death of Albus Dumbledore. You should know Professor Dumbledore. You meant a great deal to him. The headmaster was depicted as a wise and supremely powerful wizard throughout the franchise. But in order to get an advantage over Voldemort, he has to make his body vulnerable. While it was already hard to see him weakened, it was tougher watching Snape utter the curse that ends Dumbledore's life. Please. How about a cadaver? In one swoop, Harry loses a father figure, the wizarding world loses a great protector, and the heroes lose trust in Snape. And just when we were getting over Dumbledore, Dobby gets a dagger in his chest. The loss of these two characters will always hurt. Dobby is happy to be with his friend, Harry Potter. Number 8. Rue, The Hunger Games Rue's death made us realize the reality and brutality of The Hunger Games. The concept is quite sickening. In a dystopian future, young tributes are chosen from each district of the country and forced to battle until one is left alive. The lone victor, bathed in riches, would serve as a reminder of our generosity and our forgiveness. The winner gets personal rewards and food for their district. Although we obviously know that this is depraved, the death of Rue really drives the darkness of it all home. Rue is just an innocent little girl who befriends Katniss in the arena. How long was I asleep? Couple of days. I changed your leaves twice. Thank you. Together, it looked like the two could find a way out. But Rue unexpectedly receives a fatal blow and dies. Sting. Okay. The death itself is affecting, but the tears really start flowing when her home district raises their hands in collective tribute. Number 7. Brooks, The Shawshank Redemption 
Brooks represents the fragility of change and the inability to adapt, especially in inmates who have been locked up for decades. I have bad dreams like I'm falling. I wake up scared. Sometimes it takes me a while to remember where I am. Brooks was imprisoned for 50 years and has incredible difficulty adjusting to the modern world and his newfound freedom. In one of the most heartbreaking montages in film history, we watch him struggle with everyday traffic, loneliness, nightmares, and his job as a grocery bagger. Make sure your man double bags. Last time he didn't double bag and the bottom near came out. Make sure you double bag like the lady says, understand? Yes, sir. His final words serve as a painful reminder that he was battling anxieties and thoughts of taking his own life. The profoundly personal words are so devastating because they reflect real struggles that people face every day. I'm tired of being afraid all the time. I've decided not to stay. Number six, Wolverine, Logan. Logan served as a bookend of sorts for the superhero genre. X-Men basically kickstarted the movement and Logan closed a chapter in its history. It was as much a superhero story as it was a comment on the genre itself which grew up, became hardened, and eventually passed the baton to a new generation. Take your friends and run. Logan's death served as both this metaphorical baton passing and the culmination of nearly 20 years worth of superhero stories and character work. What do they call you? Wheels? <laughs> this is the stupidest thing I've ever heard. This movie showed us an aging superhero well past his prime and resigned to his tragic fate, and it made for some pretty bleak viewing. You still have time. Charles, the world is not the same as it was. People literally grew up with Hugh Jackman's Wolverine, and it was incredibly tough to see him go. Number five, Jenny, Forrest Gump. Despite all his accomplishments and all that he saw, Forrest always returned to Jenny. Forrest was no stranger to death, having seen both his mother and Bubba pass away. But it's Jenny's death that truly made an impact, both on Forrest and the viewer. I wish I could have been there with you. You were. While we don't see Jenny's actual death, the final moments between her and Forrest are gorgeous, and the montage where Forrest talks to her grave is one of the saddest yet most uplifting montages in film. And every night we read a book. She's so smart, Jenny. You'd be so proud of him. I am. Tom Hanks is simply spellbinding, selling every last bit of Forrest's sadness and loneliness, but also his penchant for bravery. Like Forrest says, dying is just a part of life. We just wish it weren't. Mama always said dying was a part of life. I sure wish it was. Number four, Guido Orefice, Life is Beautiful. This widely beloved Italian film follows a father named Guido as he and his son, Josue, are imprisoned in a Nazi concentration camp. To guard his son from the unimaginable horrors and preserve his innocence, Guido pretends it's all a game. That concept alone is enough to make us weepy. Tragically, Guido is eventually executed by a German soldier. But his ploy to help Josue is ultimately successful. While the young boy isn't aware of the incredible sacrifice his father made, he does realize in time. It's an enormously touching sentiment that reinforces the overwhelming love that a parent has for their child. Questo è il sacrificio che mio padre ha fatto. Questo è stato il suo regalo per me. Number three, Johnny Cade, The Outsiders. S.E. Hinton's novel The Outsiders has always been praised for deftly conveying tragedy and mature themes for younger audiences. Perhaps the most important aspect of the story is Johnny's redemption. It's stupid for Johnny, man. We'll do it for Johnny. Johnny and the Greasers save a group of children from a burning church, and Johnny suffers fatal injuries. His impending death causes him to repurpose his priorities. Not only does he stop caring about the senseless gang drama, he also tells Pony Boy to stay gold. Stay gold, Pony Boy. Stay gold. His death allows Pony Boy to live, not to mention the children, and Stay Gold has remained one of the most iconic quotes in children's literature. It's clear that Johnny's lessons touched not only Pony Boy, but the entire world at large. 
Number two, Jack, Titanic. Spoiler alert, the Titanic sinks. We all knew that going in, so we all figured that one of the two main characters would die. But that didn't make Jack's death any less despairing. I will never let go, Jack. Maybe it's the way he dies. He continues to protect Rose until the very end, sacrificing himself so Rose can lay on the drifting door. We're then forced to watch him freeze to death. And let us tell you, that did not make for easy viewing. There's a boy, Jack. By the end, we're left listening to Rose's desperate and pained cries as she realizes that her love has died. And Kate Winslet perfectly captures the pain and confusion of such a tragic event. Come back. Come back. Come back. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number 1. John Coffey, The Green Mile There's just something about Stephen King's old-timey prison stories that really gets the waterworks going. The death of the innocent, childlike, and literally magical John Coffey is one of cinema's saddest moments. So many aspects of the scene are downright tear-inducing, including the crying officers, the swelling music, the dramatic sparks, and, of course, the iconic line, Please, Bo, don't put that thing over my face. Don't put me in the dark. I was afraid of the dark. John Coffey is the very personification of love and kindness, and while he recognizes humanity's cruelness and penchant for sin, he decides to die as a scapegoat. He kill them with their love. That's how it is every day, all over the world. Sound familiar? The biblical allusions allow the story to permeate more effectively, all but ensuring that we never forget the sacrifice of poor John Coffey. Did you enjoy this video? Check out these other clips from WatchMojo, and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.